Hello people, what's up? In today's video, I'd like to answer the most requested question on the YouTube comments. People often ask me that, how do I calculate growth over last year, not for the calendar year, but for the financial year? Now this seems to be simple, but there are quite a few nuances that happen once you start to do calculations over fiscal year. In this video, I'd like to address all the small nuances of calculating growth over last year, for the calendar year, and for also the fiscal year. No further ado, let's go. All right, people, I'm in Power BI, and that's where I have set up a few things. I will take you through the data model first, uh, try to explain you the logic of the growth calculation, and then we'll get started with the tax. All right. Jumping over to the data model, we have uh, three tables as of now that you can see. We have the products table, the calendar table, the sales table. There's another table which has a relationship which I'm going to show it to you in a while. But for now, simple data model, the simple regular calendar table, which is where the year is from January to December, the products and the sales table. And I have been able to create a very simple total sales calculation. And now I want to do the calculation which is growth over last year. To be able to do that calculation, the first thing that you need to do is understand the logic as to how do we start to think about last year and growth over last year calculations. Consider this particular calculation, which is, let's say, this number of 3455, five, which is the number of Jan and 2012, sales of that particular month. Now, if I'm trying to do the ca growth calculation, which is current year versus last year, then I obviously would like to compare this number with the last year Jan's number. So if I just go take a look at last year Jan number, that number is about 1200. So if I take 1200 and compare that with about 34, 3500, I'm expecting the growth rate to be about 200, 190 odd percent, right? That's the number. How do I do that? To be able to do this calculation, I need two numbers. Obviously, I need the number of the current year and I need the number of the last year. And I need to bring this number, this 1199, in the current filter context, which is right here. If I'm able to get both these numbers right here, that means if I happen to just write 119 here, as of now this is manual, but we are going to do it with DAX. If I'm able to bring that number right here, I can just say simply like numerator divided by denominator minus one, which is going to be nothing but my growth calculation. How do we do that? To be able to do that, what I'm going to do have to do is I'll have to cancel out one filter context from the pivot table. That means currently to be able to reach to this number, the pivot table is applying two filters, one of January and the other one of the year of 2012. Now I would like to cancel the year filter, 2012 filter and apply the last year filter, this filter. And the month is fine, which is January. Uh, but I would like to apply the last year filter. Now, how do we do such things? We'll, we'll, we'll be using the calculate function to be able to do that. So I'm going to say something like uh, growth and let's just zoom in a measure. And I'm going to say something like calculate. I'm trying to calculate my total sales, but the total sales is not going to be for the current year. It's going to be for the last year, the same period, the same period of January, but for the last year. So I'm going to use a measure called same period last year. It asks you, hey, where are your dates, which is nothing but my date table or a simple calendar table. I'm going to feed in the date right here. Close that bracket and press enter and drag the formula into my pivot table. Once I take this formula into my pivot table, I'm expecting to see the number for the January month of the last year. Let's just do that. Take the growth over to the pivot table and that's what I see. January month, that number appears. Okay, let me just, okay. January month, the number appears right here. And now all that I have to do is do a simple divide calculation. This number divided by this number minus one is going to give me the growth. Now, as of now we are doing uh, calendar year growth. I'm, in a while, I'm also going to talk about fiscal year growth. So stay with me. Now, what do I do? I go over to my growth calculation and I'm going to do a very simple divide. And I'm going to say, hey, take the total sales and divide that by the last year calculation that I have just built and close the bracket and say minus one, right? This is the growth calculation. So current year divided by last year minus one is my growth calculation. I commit to the formula. I press enter and I do get to see that 188 or 190% growth. Let's just convert this into percentages to be able to better see the numbers. Okay, so that seems to be good. This seems to be good. Good. The problem is, however, in order for us to do the growth calculation, we would need two numbers always. We would need the numerator number and the denominator number. For all of these values, we don't really have the, uh, the last year number. So I just have the data starting with 2011 and there is no data for 2010 and hence we don't really have the last year number, which is my denominator. For all of these values, we don't really have the current year number. That means we just have the data up until the month of August and we don't have the data beyond that. 
So therefore, all these calculations are incorrect. Now, to be able to rectify this, I need to kind of start to modify my formula. The, the, mo the formula checks to be able to do the growth calculation, we should have both the numerator and the denominator. And only then the growth calculation should be done. So let's just start kind of foolproof the formula. Okay, go back to the growth function right here and start to declare a few variables and just, just make the formula neater. First variable is going to be current year number. And the current year number is nothing but my total sales. The second variable is going to be my last year number and we have already been able to calculate that, right? So that is my last year number. All right, now I want to check before I do the calculation, current year by last year minus one, I want to check are both the numbers present or not. So let's just build a variable for that. So variable for check. And in this check variable, I'm going to check for two things that the current year should not be equal to a blank or you can write it this way or you can just write current year and last year right it's the same i mean we're just writing the same way in two different ways so you can either write it this way not equal to blank and last year not equal to blank or you can just write the very number itself and it still works right all right so current year and last year two things should not be equal to blank and if this check gives me a true only then I start to do my calculation, which is nothing but my growth. So I'm going to do the return and in the return, I'm going to say if the check gives me a true, then I will perform the divide calculation. Let's just all bring it out in the single line. So if then I will do the divide calculation and what is my divide calculation? The current year number by last year number minus one, right? That is my calculation. All right. Now this seems to be good. Uh, this is the growth calculation, which only happens if the current year and the last year number is present. If you take a look at back at your visual, the visual has started to give you all correct answers. No problem whatsoever. All right. Now that we have built the growth over last year calculation, there are a few nuances that are going to happen, which I want to bring out to you very, very clearly. Please take a look. These especially are going to be the nuances at the total levels. Now, if I just go ahead and start to modify my calculation, I'm just going to say that I don't, for a moment, don't really want the, the growth calculation. I just want to take a look at the last year number. So I'm just going to call the last year variable and just go with that. So this is the only thing that I would like to see as the result, the calculation of the last year. I commit and the pivot table changes and this is the this is the data which shows me the data for the last year. Everything seems to be fine at the month level. So against January of the current year, you see the January of the last year, pretty good, no problem at all. But if you actually take a look at the total here, against the total right here, I get to see the last year total. Now it might seem to be okay, but it's actually not okay. If you take a look at your data of 2012, we have the data for about eight months, right? From January all through August. That means the total is also for eight months of data. But this particular number, $18,327, is the total of the entire year of the last year, right? So this is the entire last year. Now, obviously, if you're trying to calculate growth at the total level of 2012 right here, you don't really want to compare eight months of sales against 12 months of sales of the last year. That's going to be a bad comparison. So maybe I want to compare apples to apples and I just want eight months of sales to be compared to the eight months of the last year, not really 12 months of the last year. And this should be dynamic. That means tomorrow, if my model gets refreshed and I have September data, the model should automatically pick up nine months from the last year and not really 12 months or eight months or whatever that might be. So how do we build that calculation? We'll start to modify our calculation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the growth right here and start to modify this calculation. I'm gonna say something like, hey, calculate function. The same period last year is not going to be the blanket uh, same period calculation for the entire last year, I'm going to tell you that how many months do you want to fetch from the last year, right? That's the modification that I would like to make in order to customize the time period that I want to pick from the last year. How do I do that? I'm going to use a function called dates between. The first part of dates between function is that what are your dates? So I'm just going to say calendar date is my date. Then it asks you, hey, what is your start date and what is your end date? Now I'm going to say that my start date is the starting of the calendar and then minus 12 months because I would like to go to the previous year. So I'm going to say something like a minimum of the calendar date and please take the date uh, 12 months behind. All right, let's just try to make sense of the start date. I mean, although I have written the formula, but you should also be able to understand that what the formula is going to do. So at this filter context, at this filter context, which is the filter context for the entire year, and the only filter that is applied to the sales table is 2012 filter, so 2012. Now, if you think that for the calendar table, 
what is going to be the smallest date of 2012 because I'm asking for a minimum date of the calendar date table. Now, the smallest date of 2012 is obviously going to be 1st of January 2012. And if I take that 1st of January 2012 and I push it by 12 months behind, I'm going to get 1st of January 2011. So my start date happens to be correct. All right, moving ahead. The end date is very important. In the end date, I want to pull the data only up till the current month end. That means if my data, let me just zoom out a bit. If my data is up till the month of August from the last year, I would like to pull the data up until the month of August. How do I do that? I'm going to first find out that where is the data until the current year in the sales table. So in the sales table, what is the maximum date? So sales date column. This is going to help me understand at the year level that what is the largest date in the sales table. So for 2012, the largest date in the sales table is going to be probably towards the end of August. Maybe not the complete of August, but towards the end of August. Now this sales date could be 25th of August, 27th of August, 28th of August, may not be until the month end, but I'd like to force it towards the month end. So I'm just gonna say that, hey, why don't you go towards the month end, but not the current month end, the previous 12 month end, like the last year's month end. Now this is gonna pick up the date of 2012, minus 12 is going to take it back to 2011, but for the same month. All right, pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna close the bracket and I think that should be it. Now, if I now take a look at the total level right here, this particular level, it's 8915. That means Power BI is trying to tell me that, weird, okay. Power BI is trying to tell me that the total of all the months from January up until August is that number 8915. I don't believe it, I have to verify that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build a card visual. In the card visual, let's just actually put my total sales calculation. And what I'm going to do is start to apply filters. So Jan filter, Feb filter, March, April, May, June, July, and August. This seems to be 8, 9, 8.92. And let's just see if that is also the result that we are getting. So if I just scroll down right here, 8915. If I just maybe remove the rounding, I think I'm going to be right bang on at the number. So this number seems to be correct. Now, don't really worry about uh, these numbers because these numbers are automatically going to be nullified once you actually do that you would want to do the calculation only for the numerator and the denominator is present and this is going to get cancelled out automatically. All right, pretty good. Now, let's just go back to our calculation and what I'm going to do now is cancel out this and say that now that my last year calculation is modified and it's giving me the result of the correct last year period, I think I can just do that. Press enter. And now you can see that the growth has lowered to about 245%, uh, which is you know a more reasonable number to see. Additionally, what you're also going to see, another nuance in this entire growth calculation is that uh, this particular number should not be present. This is at the total level and I should not really see any number right here. This is wrong because at the grand total level, I can see the grand total of all the years, but how could you compare it with the previous year? Because this is the total of all the years. So I don't really want to see that. I can build a simple condition right here and I can say that this divide calculation, which is the growth calculation, should only happen when three conditions are true. The current year number is there, the last year number is there, and this should not be at the total level. So how do we check that? I'm gonna say something like has one value, has one value, and I'm gonna say that uh, the year should only contain one value. Let me help you understand. What I'm trying to do here is something like this. I'm gonna say that right here, is there one single year in the filter context or not? So at 245%, I'm only looking uh, look at 2012. Here also 2012, here also 2012, and so on and so forth. And before this, I was taking a look at 2011. So all of this while I was taking a look at 2011. But as soon as I get to the grand total level, this has one value function that I have written is going to give you a false. That means that here we don't really have one year, we have two years. That means we are taking a look at 2011 and we are taking a look at 2012. So because it's not one value and has one value, it's trying to check for one value, it's going to give you a false. And because it's going to give you a false, the calculation is going to get turned off. And that is the beautiful thing. All right, what we have been able to do so far is calculate the calendar growth over last year, not really the financial growth over last year. Now, 
there is nothing that is going to change in your measure if you even if you're trying to do financial year growth calculation over last year what is going to change is the date table that is going to be adjusted to financial year representation rather than a calendar year representation let me take you through so what i have been able to do in the model um, is create two date tables not just one so take a look we have two date tables one is the financial year calendar date table the other one is the regular calendar year date table now this financial year is from uh, april to march that is what we follow in india but you can also create a different date table now if you don't already know that how do you build a date table a fiscal year date table i have done a detailed video on that in the past i'm going to leave a link to that please take a look at that to be able to understand that how do you build a date table but if you have the fiscal year date table, you can take the current calculation and plug that uh, inside of your you know, pivot table or whatever you're trying to draw and the calculation will automatically accommodate itself. It's not the factor of the calculation, it's the factor of the date table that you will have to adjust. All right. Now, ideally speaking, you're just going to have one date table. I believe you're going to have the financial year date table, not really the calendar year date table. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to accommodate my current calculation because I have two tables, so I will reference all the columns uh, from the calendar table to the financial year date table and my calculation will adjust automatically. That's it. That's all that I'm going to do. So I'm just going to come right here and I'm going to go over to my growth calculation and wherever I have written the calendar, I am instead going to write my uh, fiscal calendar. What was that? FY calendar, right? That's all that I'm going to write. And here also I'm just going to write FY calendar. All right. I think that's it. Uh, and this this place as well so fy calendar fy calendar this is going to be fiscal year all right press enter and this is good and obviously the visual is now going to be made from the financial year table not really the calendar year table so i'm just going to take my fiscal year uh, take my month put that right here and that is the same answer that you end up getting which is could should be a percentage uh, that you were initially getting in your calendar table but this time we have presented our data from april to march in a financial year in a, in a financial year manner but the measure doesn't change at all all right that was all about doing growth over last year for calendar year and for fiscal year if you've understood the calculation for calendar year the same calculation is going to be good for the financial year as well let me know if you have any questions around this i'll be happy to reply in the end a big shout out about my tax and my power query courses in case you're trying to solve such nuanced problems of your own data and you'd like to understand the logic of building the problem more than the formulas i'd highly recommend that you take a look at my courses it's going to be highly beneficial that's all about it thanks so much for sticking around it was a long one indeed and i will catch you guys in the next one cheers bye